I have never given up on my Chinese roots as well, but I kind of embrace the religion itself, which is a very peaceful and beautiful religion. Hi, my name is Daniel, and I'm the owner operator of You and Me Teochew Fish Soup Stall. By the way, I operate this with my sister in law, who is a Malay Muslim. Uh, we are partners at this stall. So I've been here for four months and I have been uh, selling uh, Teochew style fish soup. Now if you look closely at our uh, You and Me logo, you will see that the N word is actually made out of two, two fish. And so it represents the fried fish, which is made of uh, dory fish and uh, the other fish which is the freshly cut batang fish. The batang sliced fish is um, bought from straight from the sea port. Daily. After it has been sent to the, to the stall, I will personally go in, clean it up, slice it and then treat it so that we prepare it for, for our lunch and dinner. All our deep fried fish are prepared daily as well. So we fry them uh, late morning, just in time for lunch and most of the fried fish can be kept all the way until dinner time. Our soup base is clear broth. The broth itself is uh, boiled for a minimum of at least 12 hours. I grew up in a, in a household where fish was a common item in our diet. And we add fish almost on a daily basis. A lot of the flavours that, that I'm serving right now being reconstructed from memories. The only difference is obviously the, all the ingredients that I'm using are halal as I'm a Muslim. And it is important for me to omit anything that is forbidden. Traditional Chinese soup, especially fish soup, uh, they use uh, things like Chinese wine, they use pork bones, which I couldn't obviously. And I have got to find the right substitute to make sure that the flavour profile doesn't change from what I used to remember. So you go to any hawker centres right now or any coffee shop, you go, your go-to for halal food is always Indian, Muslim and Malay Muslim. But if you were to see a Chinese Muslim stall, the first thing you would like to know is halal or not. So what would you look out for? You will look out for firstly, num number one, halal certification. <laughs> Whether this guy has got a halal logo, uh, which, I, which I don't, I, I'm not. Because there are costs involved in going through the halal certification, I chose not to do it. The general rule of thumb is that if you are unsure, don't eat. And um, you know, let them know that um, yeah, I mean we are we are Muslims and um, we will not harm you. Try, come and try our food. I wouldn't say that it's a, a challenge, but a little bit more on the lack of awareness, the lack of knowledge. I'm sure my fellow Muslim brothers and sisters, once they are aware that I'm also a Chinese Muslim for close to 20 years, <laughs> that they will know that this place is safe to eat would be happy if they would come and enjoy our food. Prior to joining this, uh, starting this business, I was in the logistic and warehousing business uh, for 20 over years before leaving the job last year. As um, I'm already 50 and I have a passion for <laughs> cooking. So I am obviously a Chinese. If you look at my NRIC, <laughs> I still have my Chinese characters, my Chinese name, my surname. Uh, I converted to Islam close to 20 years ago because of my wife. I have two beautiful daughters who are also Chinese Muslims. And um, I have never given up on my Chinese roots as well. But I kind of embrace the religion itself, which is a very peaceful and beautiful religion. So and I think one of the main questions that I always I, people ask me is that why do you convert, you know, you're a Chinese. I'm not a, also a pure blood Chinese, I guess. My, my dad is a Pranakan. My mom is a, is a Hokkien Chinese. So when I was growing up, my household, my dad and mom converse in Malay. And both my parents grew up in Kampong. So I'm actually quite well versed in Malay language, I guess. So along the way, when I grew up, I met my wife and uh, yeah, fell in love. Decided that it's the right time to do it. And um, Alhamdulillah, went through the whole conversion process 20 years ago and uh, here I am. So one of my main general rules in life is that always give it your best shot and try out things. 
I have a passion for cooking. I've been cooking for my family for, for all their lives, I guess. <laughs> Don't let my wife know. She doesn't know how to cook. Uh, and I enjoy cooking. One of the pleasures in life is that when you cook something and they enjoy it and they come back for more, it's the best satisfaction that you can ever get. This stall, Alhamdulillah, it can get quite chaotic at times, especially during lunch time. When I'm being faced with a queue or when I have a lot of receipts, I always tell myself, um, serve one bowl at a time. Yes, you have 20, 30 person queuing up. I'd rather lose some of the customers or get them to wait half an hour rather than serving something that is half-hearted. And another phrase that has always been with me when I'm doing this fish soup, if it's not right, don't serve. More for a re religious point of view and also from the quality point of view. If it's not right, don't serve. What it means is that if you think the ingredients that you're using or the methods, the way how you're serving this food is against the religion. So if it's not right, don't do it. If the fish is not fresh, don't serve it. If you're cooking at home and you see something that is rotten, would you serve it to them? Or throw it away? Start all over. I mean, general rule of thumb. Then, if you don't serve this to your loved ones, would you serve this to, you, to, to the customers who are buying and paying for your food? I would.